Hello, I'm Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life, and good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever in the world you are. Uh, we are talking today more about building our own MMO with the uh, help of the game uh, developer NeoJack. And uh, today's topic is uh, travel and transportation. Should be quite fun. Get your mules out, your pack mules, that is. And uh, let's, uh, let's talk with everybody here. Hello, everybody in the Hangout. How are you doing today? Hello. Hello. Good. <laughs> so, Hello. So uh, welcome. And uh, there are uh, a couple of spots left if any of you are watching this live. Uh, I'll uh, post a link here in chat. And um, for those uh, watching on YouTube, you don't even hear me. Uh, hopefully you're coming over here to Twitch now. YouTube has puked completely today. So um, we will post a recording of this uh, shortly after we're done. Uh, okay, so looks like we have some new faces in here. Uh, Alex, I think you've been on the show before. I have. I maybe was, not. Uh, part maybe of not the for this. Drunken Rome. <laughs> oh, the Drunken Rome. Oh yeah, you were the asshole on there, right? I might have been. I had a little too much. To drink. <laughs> That's what happens when you drink whiskey a little too fast. I apologize. Well, I can tell you what. Um, <laughs> I funny. am already planning that we're going to have some Drunken Romes here in uh, in our uh, our game here for um, uh, building an MMO. So. Uh, it shall be fun. We'll go out for some drunk hack and slashes or something. I don't know what, but uh, we are going to do some of those. So um, we've got David here. Hello, David. And, hey, guys. Uh, how's it going? Um, and then we've got uh, Donald. Hello. Hello, Donald. Of course, we have Evil Overlord. Of course. Of course. Where would we be without a little, little evil? Lady? Yes. And, uh, you know, this YouTube thing keeps puking on you. Oh, I know. I, in now. fact, I was just thinking that that maybe we're not going to be able to do this live on YouTube as we have been. We'll have to just have to go back to uploading it right after the show um, because it has been problematic. Um, yeah. So whether I, you know, I try multiple servers and, uh, and I, you know, it works fine. And then I start getting packet loss and the whole thing's done. So... Uh, okay, we have Ink with us. Hello, Ink. Hello. Were you just out grabbing a beer or something? <laughs> yep. Uh, let's see here. Um, Me. Rickems. MC. How do you pronounce that name? It, it's it's just a random. Oh, it's a random name. Like uh, yep. like uh, uh, A S D F G. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome, and we got Robert with us. Yeah. Hey. So, uh, welcome everybody. And uh, um, so now, how many of you uh, went out and, and got your pack mule out uh, so that you could carry your ideas to the show today? <laughs> <laughs> Travel jokes. Uh, uh, yes, yes. They're not very good, but hey, at least they're custom made. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, okay, so we're talking travel and transportation, and that's two parts. Uh, one is just getting ourselves uh, from point A to point B, and the other is um, maybe transporting things, items, or maybe even other people, other players, um, and you know, from point A to point B. Uh, we have uh, talked in the game about having uh, having some sort of portal system that could be built that um, maybe, uh, you know, uh, towns may, may end up centering themselves around some of these portals uh, because they're, you know, main transportation hubs. And we've talked about, uh, um, <clears throat> about drunken roams and telephones. <laughs> now that he has his headset off, we can say all kinds of evil things about him. Starting with you, evil. I'll skip the evil for today. <laughs> I, okay. I really will. I, okay. I... Yes. Oh, wait. He's, co he's, right. com wait he's coming second. back. He's coming back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I hope he didn't hear anything. He'll have to watch the video. So. Um, yeah, we were talking about <laughs> right, the phone. I had to kill it. <laughs> so uh, we've talked about uh, having some sort of portal system, and the, the portal system, maybe uh, in its uh, first incarnation, would be something that's very unknown. 
and that um, that there's going to be some research needed to figure out how it works out and um, and stuff like that because you could walk through a portal and you're not quite sure where you end up uh, so or how to get back or how to get back ooh that's an even worse proposition isn't it well, um, it's my understanding that there will be some sort of portals. It had been mentioned before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was it by you or the developers? Uh, both. I think it was you. Both. Yeah. And if there's a portal system and we're in this at the very beginning, mm -hmm. the, acquiring the, the knowledge on how to use them is right. part of the game. Right. Um, <clears throat> how many of you watched uh, Star Trek? Or it's not Star Trek. Stargate. Stargate. And uh, how they had to do a lot of research into figuring them out and, and how to properly dial them. Um, you know, we could end up with some system, something like that, or that, uh, you know, in like uh, Ultima Online, it was based on the phase of the moon as to where it took you. Um, and uh, who knows, you know, it could be based on something else. It could be based on, you know, what kind of rocks you have in your pocket. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so... See, that's what you get for using Elven technology. I know, I know. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, so we don't know exactly how that's going to work, but um, we could talk about that a bit more of of how we could make something for uh, for traveling great distances through the portal system, but still leave it up so that we don't identify out the whole thing, and so that people have to figure out how it's done. Um, and uh, so then, then there's the issue of walking. Um, the, the map, from what I understand, is quite, going to be quite large. And I don't know how long it will take to walk from one end to another. But, um, you know, it, um, it could very well take a while. And it could very well be that there are some areas where um, there's water that's impassable, but there is other land on the other side. So uh, get out your teleport skills and try and make it across the, the so river. <laughs> is there going to be one thing I don't like in some games that I've played is that there are places that you can't go um, just by walking or mm. by traveling normally. Like you have mm -hmm. to take a portal or you have to take a train or you have to take something like a ship to get there. And to me that's like it makes the game, the world, feel smaller if you can't actually walk everywhere. Now that's kind of counterintuitive, but that's kind of how it feels like to me. Mm -hmm. Well, but if you think about it in real life, that I can't walk from the United States to Europe, and I and I, yeah, and I can't walk, walk from well, I can walk from Europe to Africa, but it's not going to be easy. If you had like a walk on water spell. Okay. Yeah, if you could, you, even if you can't walk, you could swim. Okay, maybe you'll die if you try to swim, but at least it's not like uh, in WoW where like you start swimming and then something happens, then an artificial barrier pops up and you have to turn back or else something bad happens. I mean, it makes the game feel smaller because what it feels like is that its continents are instanced. That's kind of yeah. what it feels like, and that's not really what an open world. It doesn't have an open world. I feeling don't. To I it. don't think that that's the plan, though. I think that I think that, that that we are all in one world, and it's not an instance. Um, and it, it's not like you're going to be on a ship and you're going along, and then all of a sudden, bam, you appear in the water again on a ship, you know, and continue yeah. your journey. Right. Um, I, I think it is the intention to avoid that at all costs. There, there might be some technical reason to do some stuff like that. Um, we've talked about in dungeons when whenever you travel into a dungeon that it's that since you can't see into a dungeon and since you can't you know uh, interact with the ground above necessarily or maybe you can <laughs> um, well I could just see the trap doors <laughs> as you walk hey. over somebody else's land oh you're in a dungeon <laughs> um, damn it I've been busted <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we've we've talked about that to shift resources that those don't need to have uh, the resources dedicated to it because you can walk into the caveways and and you know go into an instance. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to be. I want to. I, I know for myself. You know, if I'm traveling even on a ship or something like that to unknown wherever, it'd be great if I accidentally ran into another ship out there. You know, even though I don't know where I'm going. And stuff. 
Well, the... even more, even kind of more kind of to the point what I was saying is if you're traveling on a ship, then you should be able to jump off the ship into the ocean. Oh, and, and die? Go, and go swimming. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but that's realistic, though. See, that's what okay, I'm saying. I guess if okay. they had yeah. stamina, if they had stamina, it would make sense because then if you had like a stamina bar, then you could determine how far you could swim. So if you jump off the boat in the middle of the ocean, you know, you could swim for a while, but when your stamina runs out, of course, then you drown. Wow. But this I'll just, this just brings up whole ideas for other stuff, too, like gathering resources in the sea. But the reason is, yeah. I think, is that it when when you don't allow the player to do things normally, like mundane ways, like walking and swimming, mm -hmm. it it makes the uh, the better travel options feel less um, epic in some senses because you don't have any other options except for to take a boat. Mm -hmm. You know, now maybe you if you could swim, you'd say, you know what, I'm never going to swim this again. So it's the most stupidest decision. I, now I'm stuck in the middle of the ocean. I, how am I going to get back to land now? And then you always take a boat from then on out. Mm -hmm. but, but then it gives you the feeling like, wow, you know, I'm doing something. Bad. Now, with maybe with a ship, it's not a, that big of a deal. But I'm talking about with more like uh, magical travel options, like teleport. We haven't gotten to that yet. Mm -hmm. But teleport and things like that. When you, ha when you can get there using your feet, just by walking, then it makes, you know you, you it, makes you, it, it makes you feel that much more epic when you do it some other way. Mm -hmm. I agree 100% with that. Yeah, me um, too. The the one thing that could probably be implemented with this system is like in Eve, where they have actual grids. Um, you may the the smallest area of space you will find in Eve is called a grid. It's about 250 kilometers across, and it's uh, not a static barrier. It's a movable barrier. Uh, it's kind of elastic. You can change the size by going into a, a different grid and then dropping an object. That object changes the, the grid barrier. So the, it, that's what they call grid foo. But every grid is found in a system. You can travel anywhere in the system. But you might not necessarily see what's in the next grid. It's kind of like line of sight or fog of war. So as a background mechanic where the players don't even see the grid, they don't know where the edge of the grid is, they could just walk out of everybody, you know, each other's sight. And it's kind of like it's, EQ2 where they had uh, buffered zones. You know, you keep yeah. running for a while, and then as you're running, it starts it starts um, loading the next area. As you get closer and closer, you can see just a little yeah. bit further. And that would work really well. I was looking up, uh, you know, different ideas of, you know, what we could use uh, for transportation, too. And one of the things that I remembered from, uh, from UO is the mark and recall, kind of part of the teleportation thing, is that it would be kind of neat if we had a certain number of, um, certain number of, uh, of uses that you could do of that is mark a place and then recall back to that place at a later time would be kind of neat. So you didn't have to always use the, the stargates, I guess is what we'll call them for now. I don't know. <laughs> whatever you're calling them. Portals, whatever they are. Yeah. yeah. But the idea is I, I concur uh, very much with David about the world seeming and seemingly endless. I want to be... I, the idea that you can literally walk around the world if you take a couple years mm -hmm. is yeah. as a, a, a player perceived concept awesome I should be able to get anywhere from here that level of freedom so I have from NeoJack um, that, that the intention is for it to feel like the real world to be able to swim the ocean um, from one side of the map to the other if you wanted. Um, now, of course, there's going to be some other things in there, like you know, getting fatigued and drowning. But <laughs> need to buy some sure. monsters. Um, but uh, you know, maybe you can prepare and put enough granola bars in your backpack to keep your stamina up, <laughs> <laughs> so that you can uh, swim across this sea where you have no idea where you're going, discover some new land. So well, instead of making it so like it's a uh generated boat they should make it so the players can build one like the guy in the comments said mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well at this point it's looking like pretty much everything in the world is going to be built by the players <laughs> at some point which is awesome mm -hmm. building it, boats 
This is a whole different skill set. It's kind of like evolution in the making for the game as the players build it up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine a transportation service that, like, what if what if big boats that that can really that can haul a lot of goods or that can haul a lot of people or whatnot um, is really a very high end skill that takes people a long time to learn. Just think of uh, the opportunities of. Um, of getting paid by other players to ferry them across the sea or to transport uh, goods you know that someone has made or or you know they, they mined up at a you know tip you know someplace far away and they have all this ore up there that they need transported down to their you know smelting location or something like that and they or, don't have a gate available close by mm -hmm. or different places have different currency and prices for it well, yeah, it, and there could be different costs for travel. I mean, just like uh, in in, um, in in Ultima, it was one cost. You know, reagents. If you if you you know recalled to a rune, or there was no cost going through a, a gate. But in like the Stargate uh, analogy, they had power that was required for these things, and they um, and when they went to like uh, Stargate Universe, they it, it took a lot more resources, and then they could only go one way some of the times. Yeah. So <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> oh, you just took a one-way portal. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but if you could walk back, then you're okay. Yeah, it'll take only you take you time. ten years. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. you know, one of the things that um, about travel is that I think a lot of medieval's type or fantasy type MMOs get it really wrong, and where um, comic book type MMOs really get it right is they make travel fun by giving people really exceptional travel abilities, whereas most MM, uh, fantasy type MMOs don't. They, you're you basically the fanciest MMO travel in a fantasy type is like extra speed or a faster mount or something like that, which is really kind of Lame. dull compared to some of these uh, you know, fantasy, I mean these um, comic books type MMOs which give you like super jump or super speed or fly or all these other crazy travel abilities. I think we just need to put casinos on the ships and let people gamble as they travel from point A to point B. <laughs> oh, that could be bad. That could be so bad. It's just like a cruise ship. Be Over awesome. 50 Simple miles game. out, we can let the games begin. <laughs> um, I, I, I think that um, there needs to be some easy travel and there needs to be some hard travel. And, uh, and even... Uh, places that are well, places that are very remote, or that the resources are very high, or let's say that the that the uh, environment around there is very very harsh. We, you might want Hostile. to, uh, yeah, you might want to keep newbies from going through the gate and ending up there, and so you know there would be a cost that that more experienced players would pay no problem, but a newbie just wouldn't have the resources. Uh, to do that, or yeah. maybe a skill level. Mm. Mm. Because if you're using the gates, you have to have specific knowledge on how to use the gates, like how to it, dial them. How to dial them, or you might need a magician or something. You might need mana. I don't know. Just there, there. If you're interacting with something uh, using skills, there. You either have the power to, to, to know where you're going or you, you have a knowledge base of, you know, well, this is indicating that I'm going someplace really naughty and hmm. I can't go there. Naughty? You know? There's going to be vixens? Well, my, my, <laughs> my Amazon-powered sedan chair, you know. Uh, it's the but the idea, comment. naughty, nasty, horrible, evil mm -hmm. place, whatever your, your descriptor is, you you want the knowledge level to be to correspond with how dangerous a place is, so they know that the place they're going is dangerous. Or maybe even some players having the ability to put up some warning signs or tablets or something saying, "Don't go to these coordinates because there's, you know, 500 ogres here that will kill you." Mm -hmm. And of course, there will be somebody stupid enough to go there and get killed by the 500 doors. Oh, hey, if I Ogres. see a sign saying, don't do this, I want to go investigate. Yeah, but in the same token, you've been warned. 
Yeah. It kind of sounds pretty cool. You and Marky's ideas combined, you know, with the whole Stargate concept. If you uh, if you did a deal where you know with the Stargate you had chevrons mm -hmm. to where you could dial random chevrons and it would take you to an area, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so you would have to know the address of the place you wanted, and then you could charge based on the number of chevrons that you needed to dial. So then new players wouldn't be able to afford to dial the eight chevrons to go to the really cool places. They could only dial seven because that's all they could afford, or six Ooh. or whatever. I wonder. It's neat. I wonder if we have someone in the community that that could design a system for travel that would be a grid that would make it so that when if I'm at the, the point A here and point uh, point B is really just the next town over so it only you know it only requires you know three inputs or something like that and a low cost um, but then you know if I want to go all the way out to Z which is the other end of the map it's going to be a high cost and it's going to be eight or nine you know chevrons or whatever to put in um, but then, but then, you know, once I'm at Z, if I want to go back to, to Y, it's still just a three thing from there. And, and so, so, so to, to know where to dial, you have to know where you're at and it becomes yeah. like this That's whole cool. grid, uh, thing. It's, it's very much like Stargate. Uh, and imagine if, imagine if none of this information was was published anywhere about how this works when the game opens and i could just see a fan site totally taking ownership of you know um our mmo name whatever it is um you know transportation.com and it's it's everybody working together trying to figure out this whole system and stuff it becomes community and all of us will have our notebooks with notes written all over it when yeah. we've had success getting somewhere and say, oh, it equaled this from from here. That's awesome, especially because then you can kind of keep the really cool places kind of under wraps to yourself if you find something real cool. If you decide, well, I don't want to share this quite yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you but find that doesn't bother somebody else from finding it. And it's well, just right, for right. like your guild, and that's okay. where you guys all go to hang out and stuff. Yeah, so nobody's barred from it. It's just that you just haven't told everybody about it yet. Yeah. What do you What do you do? I mean, do you walk up to this what? portal thing and like randomly input symbols to try different things out? I mean, what's What's going to make this? I guess I don't see what's fun about that. To be honest with you. Oh. Well, somebody would tell you in a book, or you'd pick it up from somewhere. I I think the the chevrons would be like an address mm -hmm. itself, and then you'd you would find stones or some kind of thing that powers it, and then a lower level would have no way to find or use those strong stones to get a far you know further away so the closer the further up in level you get the better stone you can get to, to go anywhere and any address but um, yeah something like that there 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 really isn't any levels being proposed in this game mm -hmm. but I do agree that if we're going to be implementing not only like a knowledge base, I mean, part of the the basic learning process could be somebody finds a book in a dungeon and figures out how to use it. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a power process involved where you have to power the gate on top of knowing how to use it, maybe it should be that the items found in the dungeons or in secret places mm -hmm. or whatever have individual power levels. The, the power and source could be some sort of stones or something that you set into yeah. the device and they get consumed way, when you go. Or even if they don't get consumed, maybe you know, you're only finding these power devices at first where it'll only allow you to go so far. You know, like one grid hex over or something like that. Um, but as you get deeper and deeper into uncharted territories, you start finding more, more possible things. Mm -hmm. You know, the the really big bads are hiding out in the middle of you know this very evil place. Well, the big bads always have the best loot. They always have the most power, and that's where a lot of players will flock. Now, if you don't have the knowledge, but you have the stones, it's pointless. <laughs> It's if you the have the, like the knowledge, <laughs> but you don't have the stones, you know, you're not going to go anywhere anyways. 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just I mean, like, I'm just going back to this. What makes that fun? Just randomly put, putting things in or finding destinations and check them, checking them out. Because because I play Guild Wars two mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. and they have portals and they got and they got waypoints. You open the map, click on a waypoint, teleport that. You pay silver, or whatever. You teleport to that location, or you can go to a city and, and go through a portal to another location. You know what? That's just basically like going into a door. That's mm -hmm. not f that uh, fun. It's right. just it's just being teleported from one spot to another. And it's not even related to your character. Every character can do it. You don't have to have super skills or anything. So what makes that yeah. really that fun, really? Well, do you consider the like character development and learning knowledge to be fun? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Because 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 the way I look at this is like I'm gonna I'm gonna sit at whatever portal this is, and and I'm just gonna start punching in crap until it, the gate opens up and then I'm gonna go see where I end up um, and then I'll have the knowledge at that point of, of okay from this gate I punched in this and it, and it goes there and it maybe maybe what, like we talked about the books and how like we would keep track of inventory and everything maybe it would just automatically log it in a uh, transportation book that I might have and um, so then I can recall the page for this particular portal. Well, I can choose these destinations or whatever. Um, it's kind of like a mini game almost. Mm -hmm. Maybe you yeah. could be able to sell the codes to other players. Well, and maybe. So, so yeah, may yeah. oh, maybe once you've um, yeah. once you've you've um, got all the portals for or you know the the codes for a particular portal. You could have a vendor out there holding books saying, you know, here's the coordinates to all of them. You can buy it. Only 10 gold pieces. <laughs> That's a money maker for you. Okay, so... Money thing for new... Okay, but okay let's, let's see. You get to the end of the game and these things are available. You can buy coordinates to different locations. You're still just walking through a door. Yes. That's not, it's yeah. not that fun. I just posted a whole list of different types of travel spells from Dungeons & Dragons in chat. You can see all of these can be implemented in a way that is really fun to do. Okay. Not just walking yeah. through a door. From well, the original D&D online game, well, most just of it was walking through a door, <laughs> and then your dungeon would take forever to load, and then you'd be able to play. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I kind of think I think the idea of it's not just it's not just walking through a door. It's also random exploration as well. So it's not just like wow to where you go from this continent to this continent, which you could walking. However, if you decide that you don't want to walk somewhere or whatever, and you just decide that okay, well, I know that at some point this this portal should take me to where I want to go. If then you could just start you know picking at it to figure out where exactly all it takes you, and you might end up you know getting quests from some area that you didn't even realize that were going to be part of the storyline or whatever. I mean, it, it could be more involved and as that well is, than that just walking sound, through a that door. That does sound fun. That sounds like a mini game where you're randomly getting into places and you don't know and you're learning. But that's not travel to me. That's walking through a door. And that's a mini game associated with walking through doors. Yeah. Well, eventually all all the transport methods we use will be blasé and commonplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, exploring and finding new places to be and new lands to conquer and, you know, Amazons to put under my sedan chair will will be exciting and new. It's eventually all going to become blasé. Just and like it could be kind of cool like Eve, too, to where maybe uh, if you're at a certain place uh, and you want to get to a further place, you can't directly go from that gate to the far gate. Maybe you have to jump to an intermediate gate before then you can jump to the gate that, to the area you actually want to go to. So then it's not just, you know, I mean, I guess it's still going through a door, but otherwise you could walk there or take a boat or whatever. But um, if you happen to know the coordinates, then you could get there a little bit faster, especially if you're looking for special herbs or whatever. It could be a faster way of travel if you're willing to spend the time to learn the different combinations and stuff, which is kind of I always kind of like the the idea of having you know the something you know just knowing something more, learning something in a game is always, just discovering things to me in a game is so mm -hmm. much fun. Discovery is is mm -hmm. what I really like, and that's what that's what I like about trying to figure out this stuff. But I do understand that yes, at some point we're gonna have it all figured out, uh, and. Um, and, and we'll have our resources for knowing how to travel from point A to point B, 
and um, and it won't be a game anymore. It'll just be a transportation. Um, yeah. And I and I'm not a, I, I'm certainly not opposed to like these other things that that David posted. It was like airwalk, dimension jo- door, ethere- ethereal jaunt, <laughs> yeah, uh, fly, gaseous form, levitate, you know, overland flight. There's there's a whole bunch of them here, and. Um, uh, what what about uh, David? This list that you posted. What about these? Is is it that you consider to be fun? What makes it fun? Sure, well, let me tell you. Because when you first start the game, like a normal MMO, and you don't have any of these billies, you have to walk everywhere, mm-hmm. and you have to walk everywhere slowly. Mm-hmm. And when you get a little bit stronger, maybe you walk faster. And then as you get a little smarter, maybe you can learn one of these abilities. And all of a sudden, what used to be like you thought was the normal, like just walking, that was normal, that becomes slow because now you can air walk or now you mm-hmm. can jump. And, and, and actually traveling becomes fun because you don't have to walk slow anymore, which is, what, which is really what it kind of makes it. It makes it feel like your character is getting better. It makes it feel like mm-hmm. your character is becoming more epic mm-hmm. where you can teleport all the newbies go out, can't do anything, but you can teleport away. The problem with the portals and, and waypoints is that even the newbies can use them, and it doesn't make your character feel when you're playing it any better than they than they are. True. Well, I, uh, you know, I, I certainly hope that I'll have some sort of magic recall to get back home when dinner's ready and I'm out adventuring and I need to get back home quick. That I can do that, maybe at a high cost, but that I can do it, and. Um, and I don't want to have to walk all the way back. I mean, there, there's there, um, there, there's some other games that I play that, that it can take you an hour to walk to where you're going, and then you do your stuff there, you have an hour walk back. <laughs> so <laughs> Maybe uh, part of... Well, here's the thing, though. If you're at a point where you can teleport large distances by yourself or mm-hmm. your party... Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, uh, the gates don't matter to you. No, they don't. They don't. And in fact, in Ultima Online, they didn't matter to anyone after a while. Um, it was only newer players that used them. Now, if you really want to be epic, and you don't want... Well, this is technically still a door, but you could have a dimensional gate back to your house. Mm-hmm. Like uh, a, a portable Maybe one hole. that you summon. A, a mm-hmm. portable hole. Have you ever heard of portable holes in Dungeons and Dragons? Literally, you would you would open the bag, and you toss stuff in, and it would go to a specific place somewhere else in the world, oh, and like it would just keep like being piled mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. So you know you have a, a two way hole between places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that would be for transportation of goods, too. That would be kind of neat. Well, a portable hole just opens up a hole to another dimension. It doesn't go to, like, another place, like, in your ta- in your castle or something. But anyway. Yeah, oh, but well, was, I, uh... In Ultima Online, if you, uh, you could open a gate inside your house to another location that you knew people were at that needed to come to you, and, and they could just walk right in. And, uh, and that was risky, though, too, because sometimes someone else would walk through that was not intended. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Actually, I think teleport skills and all these like door type skills where you're basically in one place and then you automatically in another place, there, there has to be room in, in the game for that because that saves you a lot of time and it's very mm-hmm. convenient. Mm-hmm. But there I'm also has to be that. room in the game for where, where you can increase your mobility and make it so that you can travel around easier rego- apart from teleportation type skills. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think maybe you should add like summoning stones and stuff. Mhm. So you can like summon a player. Yeah. yeah. Like somebody's Order. traveling a real long distance, and you don't want to do the travel yourself, and you like send them off on this quest to take this stone somewhere in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> then they summon you. Yeah. <laughs> that could be rather embarrassing. <laughs> So like your mom calling dinner time? <laughs> yeah, while you're in the shower. <laughs> Sorry, I have to go. Oh, yeah, in the shower. Great. Um, <clears throat> Summon me at the wrong time. Thank I, you very much. I think that, um, that, that I do want 
methods of travel that are other than walking and gates. Yeah. Um, I want, you know, some of these things that David posted uh, sound uh, sound interesting, and they could be skills used for different things. I mean, there's like one of them there called uh, Spider Climb, which, you know, maybe would allow you to get to the tops of trees or something like that, whereas, you know, you wouldn't, or Tree Stride, uh, I guess that's another one, you know, and that there's resources to be picked up there, and so people might work on that particular skill. Um, and uh, flight and everything, I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I also think that um, that we, um, you know, that that non-magical, you know, could be creatures such as mounts or whatever that uh, that can fly or that can run, uh, and uh, so. I love the idea of mounts, but I always the only thing that I. You know, of course, hated about WoW is that you know, you'd summon this really cool mount, and the only thing you could do with them is fly. It would be amazing if for somehow you could, like, bring your mount with you everywhere, and then also your mount could assist you in either fights or whatever. Of course, then you mm. might lose your mount if it got killed, but mm. it would be kind of neat if there was an option to and Maybe be then actually... it would be a pet. Yeah, yeah. more like a pet yeah. that you could actually ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but then that, that you actually found out in the wild and trained yourself and, mm -hmm. and captured yourself or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool if they could grow and level up to the mount, the pet slash you know mount or whatever, because then they could get bigger or something and carry you and maybe carry more equipment. More yeah, loot. it's a pet at first, then more you loot. raise it so it can give you a ride and stuff. Mm -hmm. That'd be amazing. That sounds like a great idea. However, yeah, like it must be stealable. 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 What? I'm gonna yes. bring. I'm gonna bring a cat nip with me and take your cat away from right. you. <laughs> um, suppose I'm a high level wizard and I have some sort of control monster or control mount spell. I can steal your mount and everything on it. <clears throat> so, but how long That's would the, the last? I don't know. Okay. It's just a possibility. I'm throwing it out there. Uh, <laughs> If you if you have a, a loyal mount with a telepathic bond or something like that, make it so you can't steal it. If you have something cool. that's not so exotic, you know. Yeah, a loyalty just, bar. So then you know you might be able to check on how long you had it. Steak. Yeah. yeah. In in uh, in Ultima Online, there was a hunger bar, and uh, the the animals that you had would. Um, would follow you as long as you kept them well fed they would stay very loyal but uh, if you forgot uh, then they would uh, their hunger would start going higher and um, eventually they would just go wild again and go off on their own to find food and you'd have to tame them again and uh, that that was always fun when you were expecting them to be there <laughs> you know, crap, I forgot to feed him. Uh, and, and it also required stuff. resources because then you had to have something to give them. Yeah. It gave you incentive. It, it gave you incentive not to have the mount. Yeah. They're like your Tamaguchi. It's also incentive <laughs> to log into the game more often to, you know, not only visit with your friends, but also make sure that your mount doesn't run off while you're, <laughs> you know, before you, you really better have them log well pinned up if you're going on vacation. <laughs> you know, that also goes back to, like, your house and stuff like that. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we discussed, like, degradation of your property. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have something set up where you have a stable boy that takes care of your your special horse. Oh, yeah. Or your mm -hmm. dragon mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about uh, transportation of stuff. Carts. Gonna have a wagon you carry around. Yeah, you could. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to carry my wagon. So, Woo! No, let's, you let's know, like a rickshaw into, type thing or something. Let's break yeah, it down so into mundane build up, build up transportation and magical transportation. Yes. Okay. okay, so your mundane trans transportation is you're gonna have a backpack, you're gonna have mm -hmm. a cart, you're gonna have a pack mule, you're gonna have a wagon. That's pretty mundane stuff. Or if you're going across the ocean, you're gonna have a ship of some kind. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that those are all things that you can have. I mean, you know, a backpack is going to only let you carry a certain amount, and you're going to—it's going to slow you down. It's going to encumber you. 
a cart's going to let you go with more, but it'll be slower. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a wagon and so forth and so on. So the more you can carry, the slower it will be, essentially. Take a couple of horses or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it'd be very cool to get a uh, team of horses, too, for those some of those carts, where I could have, like, four horses. And it increases like the speed for it. Increase the speed and, and they even carry capacity, really. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, for some of us, we'll need our hand <laughs> Uh, uh, sedan chair, you know. <laughs> well, the game is somewhat medieval. What about trains? About what? About trains. Trains? Like, well, like steam engines or something? Yeah, steam engines. Hmm. You know, it's it kind of. It would be really great to have something like that because in that time they probably have like invented it close to it. Not in medieval, medieval times. times. No, not medieval no, times. No, not until industrial age. And and steam leads us into the whole steampunk thing. Um, yeah, let's which, avoid that. Well, it's cool, like needing coal supply for it. But I, but, I, but you you wouldn't actually go out and build your own train. See, that's a community type of effort kind of mm -hmm, a thing. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, we would we would essentially assimilate that assimil uh, assim simulate that with a caravan, which would basically be you have to have a road, and you have to be a part of someone else's um, caravan. Mm -hmm. Make it so that it's groupable, like yeah. you can, you have individual wagons, but they can group up for transport purposes. Mm -hmm. What if, uh, what if the transport for the for like groups and stuff could be uh, something that um, the players could actually earn money at doing, and, and being more like a skill, a transportation skill. And and some of them will will work. You know, some people might take the path of of you know water based, and others might take land based, and you know to where your cart and your team of horses can you know can carry ten players all at the same time or something. You could build, yeah. build caravan stops, so each community could build their own caravan stop, and you can sort of quick travel between them. Mm -hmm. uh, so the sort of first group to actually build it up, can then sort of own and charge people. To travel from that caravan stop to the next one, so yeah. So, so were you? So what you were saying, Marky, is then one person would learn their tra uh, transportation skills, and then they would actually, you know, be able to go around and take goods or people where they need to go. So they would have mm -hmm. like a trade route. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty Possibly. neat. But then you could earn money in the game if you didn't want to be a fighter or whatever. Right. That's you exactly how you learn could earn. craft skill. You mm -hmm. could just be the transport guy. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Because then you could have a reputation too. And uh, that's I, I love the idea of that. The I can see whole groups setting up, and, setting up, you know, routes that we're always covered every fifteen minutes. There's another one leaving, yeah. you know. Um, and, and somehow it's worth their while to do it. Pony Express. That's right. Yeah, exactly. that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, the, impl the implication there is that you either I can't travel by yourself, or traveling by yourself is risky. Or it just takes longer, because because you know uh, a horse-drawn cart, you know horses drawing the cart would go faster than walking. At um, least on a mundane level, we're talking about mundane travel at this point. Right, right. Yeah. So, but I mean, if I if I leveled up so that I could have one cart with, the, with all my supplies in it, and I should and I can travel down the road with that, um, why would I want to go with a player who can do that for ten for ten players? If there's not some benefit to me that I'd be willing to pay him for it, so he well, didn't have exactly, the skills. That's well. That's exactly what what I was saying is that is that you know I I'd be willing to pay for that transport um, if it got me there you know three times as fast, fast four times sure. as fast or something. Yeah, or say it, or even if it's just safer, you know. Right. Right. Yeah, okay. So yes, I get your point there now. So yes, um, that that maybe that adds a level of safety to it as well. Players could probably make roadblocks and trap people that are traveling alone. Bandits. I mean, it really, because if everything is lootable, then you know what's the big targets on these things is the wagons. Ooh, have to hire yeah. some guards then too. <laughs> I mean, you, you basically have to have a caravan if you if you're serious about moving your stuff safely. That'd be pretty cool. There'd be uh, caravan clans or whatever, almost like gypsy that'd go around, pick up all your stuff, and move it to where you need it. 
I don't know if you'd want gypsies to take your stuff. <laughs> yes, maybe that was a bad, <laughs> that was a bad comparison. <laughs> but having well. some sort of transport service would be handy, especially if you're going between cities. Let's say you buy something very large and you really don't have a magical transportation yet. You know, I want you to. I'm going to pay you X amount of gold or whatever the currency is to transfer. Uh, you know two tons of, of this particular herb or mm -hmm. mineral or something like that to our city that doesn't even have this supply. Right, where you can make a lot more money because it goes that for way, a higher price. Yes, and that way people can do the things they want to do in the game as opposed to, well, I've got two tons of this frickin' herb. What do I do with it? How do I get it back? I don't want to think about that as a player. I like, I, I'm mostly here to, you know buy books or something and, okay. and and learn something and or or go raid a specific dungeon that's close by this city and you know I don't want to deal with transporting stuff I'll let somebody else handle it who well likes to transport stuff you can I don't hire know why I, I don't know why they like to transport stuff but they apparently do mm -hmm. you know let me, let me I also just... have a question about what about the in-game mail system mail system we haven't even talked about mail or communication. Yeah. Well, it somewhat goes into transportation because sometimes I can like mail goods, like ore, for mm -hmm. example. So that should be also kind of be handled by the caravan or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's or yeah. not allow yeah. any allow, allow any them. big goods being transferred by the in-game mail system. <laughs> you can Sending do like a a, you can do like an auction. You've seen this um, store? No, it was called like Shipping Wars, where it's like a reverse auction. So you say I got 50 ore. Who wants to take it to some from A to from point A to point B? And people will bid on it. And you go with whatever, whoever you feel comfortable with, based on the rating level, whatever. Hmm. Chatroom has an idea. Medieval UPS. Hmm. Auction book contracts. But that I mean, be M U P S. But let me ask, what's a caravan actually do? I mean, do you just sign up for a caravan and you actually travel along the roads, or is it like like a like a waypoint system again, where you kind of go through a gateway from one A to point A to well, point? what the you know something that I was thinking about this was that um, that, that magic could be a lot more instant and then than these methods of a caravan or whatever and that uh, magic could possibly be even safer than caravan but it's even more costly um, and so there's you know there's the economy of, of resources for this face you know faster safer travel and that people who can't afford it, you know, the peasants or whatever, they're the ones taking the caravans, and the rich dudes, well, they're, they've got their mage that they've hired to just open a gate from point A to point B, or, or they've purchased their, their scrolls of transportation, uh, or whatever. How about the lower the level magic they have, the more unstable it is for them sending stuff? It's possible. So then you might not get it to your of house, go somewhere else. <laughs> Ends up in a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you let the players decide what they're going to sell their services for, then the only way you can make it so that magic is more expensive than mundane means is making it that much more difficult to acquire that skill, or that much more resources for the magic. Because because is 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 magic um, resource free? Um, you're using potions or you're selling it. Sure, like yeah, you're you using spell components or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And those and those components may be uh, maybe maybe they are not as readily available in the world. You know, some special herbs that are needed for the for the group transportation. Uh, you know, spells, and so you both have to have the skill and you have to have the the, the proper reagents or resources. Yeah, so you can certainly set the cost of teleportation if you could set the cost of the actual spell components. So that would be an easy way to balance that out. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the spell components could be raised in price by, by reducing how much uh, a, of a commodity that's used for it is available in the game, how often it spawns. And so if the price is too low, Neojack could say, you know, the, our intention is not working out on this. Okay, the spawn is too high. Let's reduce it by 30%, and what should happen is that the price should go up by 30%. Yep. Yeah, I However, they, they have to make this an invisible mechanic. 
Well, right. They wouldn't tell us. Um, we nerfed your herbs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, this would just be behind the scenes that they say this is not working as intended and, and uh, make an adjustment. And and we just, you know, or, or, or make it um, an adjustment that happens slowly, like they want to raise the price. So it's moving 1% a week you know, fewer spawns of it or whatever. So it's very transparent to us. We don't even yeah. notice it. Now, the the other thing is we're also making the assumption that uh, when, whenever you come up with something like that, you should also make the assumption that if players are gathering the herbs or player-hired uh, NPCs are gathering the herbs, uh, you know, there is still that mechanic as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe instead of uh, changing the the level of materials available, make it so that the NPCs suddenly get hired to do something else. They change professions, or they've been mm -hmm. hired by you know hired out from under you. That way, it's more player controlled. Mm -hmm. So if somebody, you know, you have a bunch of NPCs, well, they find better employment doing something else. You know, they're going to stop you know, gathering this herb now. Or they're going to do can, it more if, it, if it's worth more. Exactly. Well, here's the thing. If something, uh, if something, if the NPCs are hiring into different professions or changing the areas they're working in, because remember, we don't want our NPCs to be static and we don't want there to be an unlimited supply. So uh, what I'm saying is there's multiple levels here. You can change the economics of the system. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it doesn't have to be just you're you're changing your spawn rates. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, people aren't gathering it as often, or they've completely gathered out a, a local area. You know, mm -hmm. they've completely destroyed the crop by over over taxing it. Mm -hmm. Or you another know, player organization decided that they're going to try and control the market, and they're going to all work down. together to collect all of them before anyone else gets the chance, thus raising yeah. the price. And in, then it goes into transport costs. How far away do you want, how much of a radius do you want to control this particular herb mm -hmm. for trans teleportation, you know? Mm -hmm. So costing more with magic, it, it, there's multiple routes that can be managed without the players seeing it, or maybe even caused by the players. Mm -hmm. Couldn't which it cost, changes. Sorry. No, go ahead. Couldn't it cost more kind of... I was thinking of Eve with uh, wormholes now. Couldn't it be kind of neat since we were talking about, you know, you could start out with just, you know, your your uh, buggy or whatever and a pet, right? Well, if you have your, your pet pulling around your buggy and let's say you're resource harvesting and now you want to teleport back to your house, along the idea of having reagents to open up the teleportation, you know, portal to go back to your house and take the cart straight back to your house, wouldn't it be kind of neat if the portal... Uh, uh, strength was based on either your skills or your skills and the reagents that you were using. So then like well, like with the wormholes in EVE, you can only travel through the wormhole with a certain size ship because it weighs so much and then it collapses behind you. Yeah. Um, so maybe so something like that could be worked out to where you can only take so many resources through the portal before the portal says, okay, no, you're, you, you can't fit. And this sense. is like the greater the skill, the more that they can move in one shot. Yeah, I right. do like yeah. that. I do like that a lot where it's not like vanilla. Where it's not static. Have, yeah, you have to have some kind of a skill to do it. Like even if it's like if you have a minute a minute amount of this skill, you can only travel back to a home within a certain range. But yeah. as you get better at this skill, you can roam out farther and still get back. Mm -hmm. Kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And you would want somebody, you know, if you're a big guild and you're all working together on something and you need to all move from one place to another, you better make sure that one of your one of your people is very high in transportation um, or in magic or whatever, you know, the particular skills necessary so that they can they can transport the whole group. Or you bring three or four of them because they can only do ten each. You know? Can I ask a question real quick? Sure. The transportation kind of underlining uh, underlying the transportation is the is the need somehow in game to move things from one point to another. Mm -hmm. So does that assume that you're only going to be able to sell your goods in one spot, but you have to harvest them somewhere else, or what? What's the transportation about? The the assumption is is that just in just like in real life, that uh, if you want 
uh, good truffles, do you get them from where? France? Is that where good truffles come from? You know, supposedly. The, supposedly. You know, you. Um, you know, so there's a, there's a cost. Like the the cost of a truffle in Tran in France is a lot less than if I want one here in Florida, in the United States, and uh, so I would have to pay more for that here because of the transportation cost. Because it's just not a local resource. So and what I'm saying is that you you can't sell it globally. You can only sell things locally. Is that what you're saying? No. Yeah. No, not at all. I mean, you you can't well, you can take it anywhere you want and sell it. Right. Anywhere so in the you world. can sell it. You can move it somewhere and sell it. Yes. But like, for example, in Guild Wars 2, the trading post is universal across all servers. Uh, there is sell. no auction house. Okay. This so is nothing all like that. person to person or person to vendor. Okay. And so vendor that, to person. That's the reason why you need transportation. And that's yes. what I was trying to figure out what the whole, what the first transportation is about. Yeah. Yeah. Because couldn't then you, if they don't have that resource at all, Marquee, then you could maybe go to a transportation person and like put out an order or something. So if you didn't want to travel all the way back to another town, maybe mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes I, you sense. You know, and I, I was thinking of that too. That that it would be very nice to be able to just get the stuff to the local town and and deposit it securely at a at some place that does transportation, and then you know. Um, pay somebody to transport it and so you know player who likes transporting comes along and says "Ooh, I can get paid this much to move this stuff if you bid it too low well then maybe it takes a lot longer to get there because you know the the people aren't as interested in in doing it so it becomes an economy thing uh, and um, then you know in your hometown it you, you go and check in the morning to see if the stuff's there if it's not well then you didn't offer to pay enough <laughs> yeah. 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 So if yeah. I go to my hometown and I sell the, to an NPC my stuff, the NPC pays a certain amount of transportation cost to move it to a city to resell it to the locals in that city. Um, that's essentially the same kind of mechanic that I would have to do if I were interested in selling my stuff in that city too. I'd have to pay yeah. for it to be moved. Yeah, so or they, you have to move it yourself. Or move it yourself. So there has to be – okay, so so it makes perfect sense. The economy is – makes it's, it's very logical. It's intuitive. There's nothing complex about it in terms of how, how would you think of it conceptually. I, like, I really like that actually. Mm -hmm. and, that sounds yeah. really cool. My, my thoughts on that is, is that resources – you know, we'll be at different locations. Um, you know, uh, we we haven't even gotten into, you know, to see what the world map looks like yet or anything like that. But but certain resources will be available in certain places. Some of them very specific. You know, there might be only one dungeon where something or other spawns and it becomes worth a lot of money. And there would be a lot of people at that dungeon all the time trying to get that. And uh, as we talked yesterday, it might be everybody getting ganked on their way out because everybody <laughs> wants your loot. <laughs> Um, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, but uh, and other stuff, you know, like trees, wood, you know, is is very mm -hmm. abundant across the map, except for in more desert areas, you know, where it's harder to get. You know, this whole this whole thing. Maybe even water is even you know one of the resources that's needed. Potable water. That's potable water. Yeah, yeah. And there's so, also uh, there was a whole post on the forum about quality of materials rather than just type of materials. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. So you might live in a place that only has pine trees, so you can't really make really good furniture from that. No. And another player, a person might live in a place that has red oaks. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to be able to sell that red oak for more than your pine for sure, you know. Because yes, and if they transport it to where all the pine is, they're definitely going to get a lot more money. Then because in the local economy, it might sell for the same price as as, you know, just a little bit more than what pine does in the in the pine heavy area. Yeah, you know, this is really starting to sound exciting, actually. Yeah. Now, uh, markets and discovery. Let me, let me throw out with all this, though. Uh, I don't want to have to sort of take all my gear, uh, almost say 2,000 bits of wood to one market, and then have them to wait around for that to sell, and then be able to go home and then do other things. There needs to be sort of local markets where you can throw it on there and people can then just buy off when they want to and then you can be doing other stuff at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I, I think that the that the theory at the moment is is that NPCs will always buy anything of value, but they will pay you a lot less than what a player would pay you. And I think in wholesale. Um, yeah, wholesale or like, you know, twenty percent you know, maybe pawn shop level. I don't know. Um, now and but you then, could also 
you could also have players who own a shop yes. in a town, and you could sell it to them for whatever you could negotiate. Yes, with. and one of the things that I did in Ultima was uh, I took resources from certain people and I made deals with them. I'd be like, I will commit to buying this amount of this resource per week, and I'll pay this price, and they would have it for me all the time. And then I would use that in my sales, and I would, I would make good money on it. And I got a great price, and I got large volume, and then I brought it out and, you know, changed it up or added it as a component or whatever to make my other sales. Um, the, um, <clears throat> uh, the, the other thing is, is that we are going to be able to have some sort of vendors or something like that uh, to sell our wares. And so if you want to work in a particular area and get some money at that time, maybe you'll buy a single plot of land where you can, you know, have um, just a vendor or you can pay rent at some mall to put your vendor in there and, and just keep stocking it with whatever it is that you're, you're doing. Um, but, I, but, I, but I think that the further away from the resource you go, the higher the price is that you'll get for whatever that is. That's really cool. Do we, with this economy, it sounds amazing. Is there, um, do we know whether or not uh, there would be a possibility of maybe like a Diablo kind of auction house in the future or to where, you know, uh, the company doing the game would also take like a percentage for everything that could oh. be translated to real money or is mm -hmm. that not? Mm -hmm. I, I don't talk? know that we've talked about auction house and not about auction house and there's a lot of people who are very passionate about not having an auction house because it creates more community. Um, and um, we've not broached the subject yet of how people, what, what, what's going to happen if, if I have, you know, my 50 logs that I want to sell to somebody else and they want to pay me 10 bucks for them in real life cash, you know, whether or not that would be allowed, if so, how would it work and everything. And, um, and then the issue of getting scammed which is a big issue in those, and so you need some sort of controls in the market. Um, I think it's a great subject to, to have. Um, it's also one to be afraid of, because uh, Diablo's, uh, what they did, um, was exactly what everybody had been talking about trying to build, and then I think it failed pretty horribly. Um, yeah, boy, there, that's enough. There was, a, there was a, a few people that made a lot of money right off the bat, and then nobody could could really make anything and so there has to be um it it has to be good for the game whatever it is on that we come up with um so it, it can't disrupt the fun yeah um <clears throat> okay now on a flip side mm -hmm. one, one little side note since we are having some sort of letter system where you can mail somebody you can set up let's say, with a merchant in another city, a uh, line of credit or uh, money. You can leave money with him and say, use these funds to purchase items and send them a letter and have them transport items to you mm -hmm. instead of you having to travel to the city. Right. So I, this I wonder gives if you, you, could, uh, set up, you could set up your own vendor to buy things. You have a buy list as well as a sell. Uh, stuff that you'll sell. There you go. board somewhere where sort of you advertise, I want buying 200 logs for this price. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe a yell feature. A yell feature. <laughs> yeah. I want to hire a town crier, and I want to annoy <laughs> the crap out of all of you. Yeah. Um, you got to be careful about you know. how you do it that it doesn't become annoying. Well, you know? that's what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. But I just, I want my town crier to go into the dungeon and say, Marky has health potions at his vendor right outside the entrance. Ten pence each. Well, that's exactly what you don't want. You don't want to go to a dungeon and see, and see 50 stalls outside the front of your dungeon, you know. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to look. Uh, so um, that that could be. And, and I'm sure with, with all of this is, we're going to keep going through all of this as we go along. So even into production, we're still going to be doing some sort of, of community uh, roundtable and everything. And uh, one of them may be, what are the current problems in the game? And it could be just about the resolution of those problems and coming up with solutions, and then we get to see them implemented in the game. And I could totally see that, that, you know, oh my god, I have to walk through this field of vendors on my, on my way to the dungeon because everybody's trying to sell me crap that, uh, 
you know, for when I die or whatever. And, and it's very unsightly and doesn't feel good. Um, and so it might be a, uh, a subject like that I could very well see. Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, anyway, we're out of time. For today so um, uh, tomorrow's um, tomorrow's topic is uh, tools for content uh, and that includes stuff like fan sites or applications or um, you know people doing video gameplay video what kind of things we can uh, include in the game to uh, make that um, um, you know to make that better for the community, you know, to add to the experience of the game overall, uh, two things. One is to attract more players and one is for us to be entertained. And um, that also can include stuff like connections with social networks and stuff. Um, so um, I think uh, that could be a very fun conversation, uh, especially if I can, uh, you know, when I... Uh, when something really amazing happens in the game and I'm the one to do it, that um, mm. everybody knows about it <laughs> or whatever. So, um, <clears throat> or that I just want to be able to see what's going on in the game and have some, uh, you know, real time stats. So, um, okay. That is, uh, that's the show for today. Same time tomorrow, everybody. And um, I look forward to, to having y'all here and uh, we'll do it again. And, uh, See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.